All right, guys, let's get this video kicked off. You guys can see it's gonna be a Civic video. You guys can see in the beginning there, pretty much got the block ripped apart um, the other day. You know, I filmed that the other day, but uh, got most of the parts in, got the pistons in. Um, you know, I, I connected the pistons to the rods, all that. I, showed, I got a couple clips of, you know, how I did that. Just a little tedious clip getting in there, get the wrist pin in there and all that stuff. Make sure your orientation's correct and all that stuff. But this is what everything looks like now. This is where I'm at now. What I like to do, as you guys can see, I, I cleaned up the block a little bit. But what I like to do is get all the pistons out first and then, you know, remove the main cast and then pull out the crank and all that stuff. I still want to clean up a little bit and inspect inside there. Um, you know, so far one's out. Doesn't look too bad. Um, this one's gonna be, you know, fairly straightforward because I'm working with all standard sizes. You know, I didn't bore this block over or anything like that. So, you know, when we go to marry these uh, these piston rings, you know, I'm, I'm expecting everything to be pretty close. You know, if we gotta file some down a little bit, I'll show you guys how to marry the piston rings to each cylinder. <clears throat> and then I pretty much got, you know, all the pistons laid out there. One, two, three, four. That's how I'm going to set them in and then you can see the comparison of uh, two that I took out of the connecting rod. I mean, you can see, you can see the major difference there. You know, definitely a stronger rod, definitely a stronger piston. So this motor should be able to hold some power. But so far, I'm going to set up the, uh, set up you guys on the uh, tripod here and then just, uh, you know, pull the rest of these pistons out, get the crank going. You know, I tend to get in the zone and all that stuff. So. You guys kind of just uh, watch over my shoulder while we pull this crank out, get everything set up, and then uh, get these uh, NPR rings married to each cylinder so we can go ahead and install them on the, uh, the pistons, getting ready to drop them back in as long as everything goes well. guys so got all the pistons out got all the main caps off uh, you guys can see a little technique you kind of just take the bolts and wiggle them out you know you want to be sure not to uh, to mess up the crank at all or scratch the crank journals or anything like that but pretty much from here I'm gonna go ahead and pull this crank out I'm gonna inspect it if everything's good clean everything up um, clean out the block a little bit you know boring stuff get everything cleaned up inspect the block all that stuff normal stuff you should be doing when you guys are building a motor you know always check to make sure that nothing's wrong with it yes this you know this motor ran just fine but you never know there could be a hairline crack in there you know pitting going on you know something loose inside there you know I always when I'm pulling apart I always inspect as I go even if it's a good motor whatever but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of all that stuff we'll get back at it and we'll go all right guys so got everything cleaned up got the crank out pretty much just wanted to uh, inspect a few things some of these bearings definitely got hot um, you know in a perfect world in a perfect world I probably should be setting this block out or you know replacing the crank I, I think the crank is fine um, 
I think it's going to be fine, especially with these king bearings that I'm using. Uh, you know, no major really damage. Just uh, definitely some heat and all that stuff. So basically, get this thing set in here. I'm going to drop in all the main bearings, the bottom parts of the main bearings. Uh, check my clearances, drop, drop in my thrush washers and all that stuff. You know, make sure all uh, my end plays good and all that stuff. Get the bearing caps torqued down and then uh, we'll, start, we'll start on the pistons. So I got everything set up. These bearings are numbered, so I pulled them out, laid them out, set them up here. Um, pretty much one, two, three, four, you know, all the way down, five. And I just like to check to make sure there's no debris on there or burrs. Get them lined up. And drop them on in. Make sure they fit into the channel real good. I like to keep them flush. And then just do the rest of them the same way. <clears throat> Alright guys, so I got them all in there. I'm pretty much just going to put some assembly lube on there and then uh, drop the crank down in there. Make sure they're seated in there all the way. And I'm just using some, uh, you know, high performance Lucas assembly lube. Uh, you could use oil too, but you know, this motor's probably going to be sitting and all that stuff. I definitely, you know, definitely don't want any dry starts. This is more like, uh, you know, like a molasses type, so you know, it sticks to it a little bit better. But get a nice, nice, decent amount on there. I'm going to rub it in with my finger here, but just go down. And you only want to apply assembly lube to the top parts of the, the bearings. And this one I like to get the size for the thrust washers. Don't forget to add your thrust washers. Check your clearance. Nice and generous with the assembly lube. We get those thrust washers in there and then uh, drop this crank in. Now these things are grooved. You guys can see on one side the groove will be facing out. Go ahead and set those down in there. The assembly lube will kind of hold them in there. Now you want to be easy with this, make sure everything's lining up correctly, make sure your thrust washers don't fall off. And everything should drop in nice and easy. Alright, we got that set up, we'll get these end caps going, drop the end caps in and torque them down. Got the caps back on. Uh, pr they're pretty much numbered. You guys can see that little arrow faces towards the front. One, two, three, four, five. Got them all pretty much snug down. I like to, uh, you know, tap them with a little rubber hammer and all that stuff to kind of get them seated, and then you know, run them down with your fingers or you know, like a real light impact until they just kiss it. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and start the torquing sequence. You wanna, you wanna torque in sequence here. You know, start off with the middle one, number three. You know, and then two, four, and then out, work your way out to the outer ones. Uh, the first sequence is going to be 18 foot pounds. So I got the tech angle out, set it to 18 foot pounds, and then just start torquing away. So got the first one down, you always want to just double check, make sure everything's still moving freely and all that stuff. Give it a couple spins, make sure nothing's binding up, and then just go ahead and hit it with the final torque, which is 56. So 56 foot-pounds, so you got it set to 56, and then just go on and do the same. Everything's still moving freely. That Lucas assembly loop really works well. All right, guys. So jumping to it, I'm gonna talk about uh, talking about marrying these uh, piston rings to each cylinder. Uh, you know, this step obviously I like to 
I'd like to get everything I'm going to need set up. I'm pretty much hoping that, you know, this being a standard size block and, you know, I didn't bore it over or anything like that, I'm not going to have to file too much. You know, as far as the rings, compression ring, you know, you'll want to drop it in each cylinder. You know, the cylinder you choose is the cylinder that it's going to, you know, that's going to end up on that number piston or to keep it with the cylinder that you do. But obviously use a good feeler gauge. This being standard, you know, size, like I had said, I'm not expecting too much, but basically what you'll want to do is pretty much just, uh, you know, drop it in here like this. And, uh, you know, I, you want to do a little bit of math, but pretty much checked, and we want to be um, at least uh, 15 thousandths with a feeler gauge. So pretty much just drop it in there. Then you could grab a piston, push it on down there, get it true to the cylinder walls there. You can see it in there, the gap there. And then, like I said, I'm pretty much, uh, pretty much guessing that we're not going to have to do any filing. There is a tool for this. I don't have it. So if you do end up having to, uh, you know, grind a little bit off, you know, you'll want to stay true and square to it. But here, let's uh, go in for 16 here. Let's see if this fits in there. And uh, yeah, just like I thought, 16 fits really good with a little bit of drag. Uh, we'll bump it up just to make sure that like an 18 ain't going to fit in there. And each bore will be different, but uh, you know, that's what we're going for, at least 16 thousandths. Let's go with, uh, let's see if an 18 will go. I don't know if you guys are seeing that with the lighting here. Yeah, 18 is too big. So 16, like I said, being standard sizes, I didn't expect too much here, but that's how you'd set up. Obviously, you know, if you're grinding on these or cutting them down or got a custom block and all that stuff, that's how you'd set up for it. So this one here is obviously going to be for number three. So I'll put it with number three piston and all that stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and just uh, check the rest of these, make sure they're all good. Oil rings, I don't really worry about too much. But, you know, definitely the compression ring, you'll want to make sure your clearances are good. It does expand when it gets hot and all that stuff. You want to make sure you have your clearances. Uh, go ahead and finish up that, and then I'll show you how to clock these rings and install them on the pistons. So got everything set up. I like to use a little bit of WD-40 and then some, uh, you know, uh, ring pliers. I only use these pretty much for the, uh, the thickest ring, the second ring. You know, as far as the oil rings and all that stuff, I just put them on by hand, but I do use these for the, uh, you know, the thickest ring on there, the, the middle ring. Um, you know, as far as the compression ring and all that stuff, I, I don't like to open that too wide, so I just roll it with my hands. But I'll show you how to kind of set this up. We got, we got the ring that's married to the cylinder. Don't want to mix that up. So I go ahead and set it down here. You'll start off, give the piston a little bit of WD-40, spray with WD-40, just kind of lube everything up and all that stuff. I like to start with the, uh, the oil ring. And then as I put these on, I pretty much, you know, clock them as I go. I just make sure, you know, where I clock these, you know, the gap opening, you could see there, the opening on it, you know, I just don't put it where the wrist pin is. So, you know, I'll go anywhere but. So pretty much here, here, you know, you can see the pins here. So I'll clock one here, 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 or, you know, somewhere in the middle here. You know, I try not to cross a gap through the wrist pin there or overlay one the same way. Each one is different. So this first one, kind of just keep an eye on it because this one's the hardest one to see. So I'll go ahead and just clock that to, we'll say the middle of the piston there. So you can see it right in the middle there. Grab my first oil scraper ring. I put these on by hand. I'll start at the bottom. You don't want to open these too much. You don't want to scratch the pistons, but I'll just kind of follow it around. And as I do it, I'll clock this one, we'll say, on the opposite side. So we'll go just on the other side of the wrist pin. Get it tight, and then just walk it on there. Clock that over to there. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. So we're right about, we'll say right about there. Our first one was uh, in the middle here. We'll get the bottom one going. We're going to go ahead and clock this one 180 
from that one. So we'll go here and then just walk it all the way around. You hold it in with your fingers as you're going. Try not to scratch the side of the piston and then just drop it right in. So I like to double check. So we got one there. You can see one, 180 right there. And then just make sure that the, uh, the oil ring stayed where it's supposed to be. This one's kind of hard to see and I lost it. But you can always tell because it looks different from every other one. I want to say we left it in the middle there. Here it is, right in the middle there. So oil rings clocked. We'll go ahead with the, uh, with the second one. This one is marked top with the end. This is the one I do use with the tool. And then you just want to make sure when you clock this one, it's not matched up to anything, you, you know, any ones you already did. So we'll probably go ahead and clock it here on the intake uh, side there. So this one I do use the tool for. Just hold the piston, grab the little uh, ring tool, grab a hold of it. Try not to spread it apart too much, but get the back set in there, hold it in with your finger as you open it up, and then just drop it on down. I should use my other pair because I modified my other pair, but pretty much just like that, you can see. So we're clocked over here. So our last one, the compression ring, will 180 that and clock it over here. Go ahead and grab cylinder three, I believe. This one's married to the cylinder. This one does have a mark. Marks always face up. And we'll go ahead and 180 that. This one I like to just put on by hand. I'll start on one end there. You know, and then just start to walk, walk it on. Keep it up like that, try not to bend it too much. And then just walk it right on. I like to do that because it doesn't open it too much. So rings are all installed on that, clocked, pretty much ready to go. So I'll go ahead and finish off this last one and we'll get ready to uh, install them into the block. So getting ready to uh, drop in these pistons. Got everything laid out on the floor right here. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Go ahead and start off dropping in number one. You just want to make sure, you know, the crank is facing down on one and four. We'll drop those in first and then obviously two and three. Be real careful to not nick the crank or anything like that. You'll want to use a good ring compressor tool. There's a couple different kinds. This one's kind of big, but we'll go ahead and uh, use this one. But pretty much grab the piston. Everything's all clocked. All my rings are clocked, ready to go. You'll want to note the orientation of the arrow there. Make sure that's facing the way it should be. I got some WD-40 on here. Everything's oiled up. Let's go ahead and install the ring compressor on here, tighten it up. Try to keep it square. And then it helps if you drop it in a little bit, you can tighten it up a little bit more. Everything lined up here. I also sprayed the cylinder walls you know, prep the cylinder wall, spray it with WD-40 or oil, you know, whatever you want to use. Get everything true here. There we go. Tighten this up. Get all those rings compressed. Make sure nothing's binding up. That seems pretty tight. Should be all right. <clears throat> I like to use a little rubber hammer, make sure it's true to the block, and then just drop her in there. I just get it enough to where it's in. I don't want to go down too far. A couple taps, and she drops right in. So we'll go ahead and do four, and we'll go ahead and tap this one down. That's in. Then you want to make sure you, uh, you know, line up those numbers with the numbers on the rod. You know, that is, uh, it is an ambidextrous. It goes on one way. So we'll go ahead and get the bearing put on this cap. We got the ARP 2000 bolts. Go ahead and get some lube. Now we're not going to torque these down, but we're just kind of prepping them on the threads. We'll get some on the threads, and it comes with some on there already, but... We'll get some on the threads here, 
and then they want it on the top of the bolt so I'll just put a little right there right on the top of the cap so when you're torquing them down you know they're they're greased up get one started here and then you'll want to use a 12 point on those these are uh, 11 millimeter 12 point size sockets so we'll just go ahead and snug that down Freely. start off with the two middle ones the uh, ARP 2000 studs that it comes with on the car they want us to torque them down to 50 foot-pounds and then I'll obviously use the torque loop so I'm gonna do that in three steps I'm gonna go you know 30 40 and 50 I'll do that in three steps and end at 50 I'm gonna start off with these two start off at 30 We'll bump it up to 40. Then we'll end on 50. All right. Check all your clearances. Make sure nothing's bumping. Make sure it moves nice and smooth. Plus get some of that assembly loop work through there. Everything seems really smooth. Those rings feel really nice on the cylinder walls. Those cylinder walls, uh, you know, definitely were in good shape. There's a few spots on the crank I was a little worried about, but new bearings shouldn't uh, shouldn't be a problem. All right, guys. Pretty much gonna end this one here. Um, it took about like three hours, so I figured uh, wrap this one up, get this one edited. You know, got the. Uh, Got the short block pretty much taken care of. You know, tomorrow I'm gonna come in, you know, drop in the uh, oil pump, the windage tray, you know, uh, rear main seal, all that stuff. I got all that stuff new. There's a pile of parts in the office that I still gotta go through. But, uh, you know, get all that stuff put on, get the bottom pretty much buttoned up, and then go ahead and flip this thing over. We got the ARP head studs, uh, gasket, all that, get the head cleaned up, get ready to put the head on, time this thing. So, so we'll do it in steps. The, you know, the next one, we'll finish up this with the uh, oil pump, pick up the windage tray, all that stuff, get that all set up, the rear main seal. You know, maybe next video, we're, you know, we'll get the head on with the ARP studs, all that stuff, get that torqued down, show you guys how I deal with the head. I still gotta clean that up a little bit. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, I'm gonna get in there and maybe uh, clean out some of those casting burrs or what. You know, I, I, I don't really wanna have to go crazy on the head. Um, but we'll see what happens. I, you know, I want to get this. Uh, I want to get this lower end taken care of. But we'll catch you guys in the next video. Hope you guys uh, learned something on this one. At least how I do things, keeping things standard. Like I said, when you know, I didn't send out this block or anything like that. When it's just a standard size, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot of custom work and all that stuff. But you guys can just see how uh, how I get them together. It's been a while, but figure I'd get a video out there for you guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.